Well, welcome back, everybody, to Affiliated by ClickBank. I am Thomas McMahon, running solo today. I don't know what happened to Kyle, but he'll be back eventually, I'm sure. But we've got two awesome people on the line here. We've got Joe Bruno and Josh Valencia from Advertise Health and Inbox Geek. I've had the pleasure of, gosh, I think I worked with Joe years ago and it's on the affiliate side more when you're kind of running some scaled traffic as an affiliate, which you still do because, right, as people don't know, I think you've managed over something like 200 email lists. A large percent of those are on ClickBank and running and monetizing on ClickBank and a variety of other platforms. So you see a ton of data and really excited to chew on Inbox Geek and what you're doing with that software side of things on the email piece. And listeners of the podcast will know Josh Valencia. He's been on at least once before, maybe twice. I think you're one of our first interviewers, actually. So back in the day, man. Been back on, Josh. Yeah. yeah, of course. Um, yeah, but, you know, ClickBank, you know, OG here with Josh, and you've been in the space forever. So I'm excited to tap into your genius. I've been told to use that instead of pick your brains because one sounds better than the oh, other. Oh, I, I hate that <laughs> phrase so much. Thank you. Tap into genius sounds so much more inviting. Yeah. So let's tap into your geniuses. Um, Joe, I don't want to pretend that I know everything about you. I'd love if you could just give a quick overview of what you're doing right now in Advertise Health and Inbox Geek and kind of maybe lean into how one fed into the other here because I think it's a really cool story how you've kind of built the software up and how it's serving Advertise Health. But really, what are you doing on the email side right now? So what happened is that for the longest time, we've been managing a lot of data. We've always been... We always found something interesting about managing data. And I mean, also we found it interesting because it has probably the highest ROI that I've ever seen in the space today when it comes to even media buying on Facebook and so on and so forth. It's from an email list. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, 100%. And then what happens is, so we, we have like 15 plus years of managing data. And what we did over in the last five years, we realized, okay, how can we make this better? And so what we did is that we actually created technology and uh, to basically add value to the ESP. So we're, we're still using an ESP provider. We have our own technology where right now, we, our thing is almost like AI driven. And so we worked with so many different brands throughout the years that we put everybody in a bucket, right? So if somebody comes from, let's say a weight loss offer, or it comes from like a brain health offer, there's trends of those, those users that like certain products. And our database can actually dictate what products in which bucket is actually working. So we're almost at the point where our system will eventually over 60 days of, let's say, onboarding, start deciding what offers to run to which, which brands. And so what's cool about that is that you don't have to have those Excel files and try to calculate everything. It's like really a robot will not, will, will not make a mistake. A human will, you know? And so we created some <laughs> tech to integrate with ESPs and we call it the portal. And so everything's done within that. So we have all our revenue that's aggregated in there. We have all this, everything's based on a PPM basis. So we're really, we're really trying, to, trying to maximize the best return possible um, from every single subscriber that we have in our database. And then what happened afterwards, that, which is in the last, let's say six months, I would say, or maybe a bit less than that, but we started to, we came across some technology where uh, we can actually identify, and Josh is obviously a part, a part of it as well, uh, we, we can identify when somebody is actively in their inbox. And so what happens is that the beauty about this one is what we use it for is because we're sending to all our actives and so on, your active list is probably smaller than the actual database that you have. And so you might be sending to, I'm just going to throw out a number, 300,000 people a day, you might have a non-openers list of 500,000. And so oh, that high. We, start, yeah. we started actually using Inbox Geek, which is, an, and I'll, I'll explain to you what the technology is, but we started using Inbox Geek afterwards to actually identify when somebody's act, actively reading their emails. And then we would send them basically a win back, a re-engagement campaign, because the chances of them opening that email now is two to five times higher. And surprisingly, we started to do 30% open rates on people that have never opened an email before. And so, wow, so you can tell when I'm in my inbox reading emails yeah. and then you're going to send me something right at the top of my inbox while I'm staring at it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> that That's cool. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. So what we, we decided to do is we use it internally oh. for ourselves. Sorry to cut you off, Thomas. Uh, we, we, we decided to use it internally for ourselves. And then we said, listen, you know what? Listen, there's a ton of email marketers out there. 
And there's so many people that would love to use this type of service, product, whatever you want to call it. And if it worked for us, you know, it's going to work for them, right? So we packaged it up. We, we created Inbox Geek and we made an, a very easy interface that you can actually plug and play. We uh, integrate with most of your, the ESPs that are around. We also provide some sort of white label service where we'll take you to the steps, give you our strategies that work well and so on and so forth. And so far, I mean, Josh, you can maybe comment on that as well. We've been having great feedback. I mean, people have been seeing great results. And so usually those ideas that um, when, you know, like the, when, when they work for you, they all, all of a sudden start working for somebody else. Because if it works for me, it has to work for everybody else, you know. And so well, it sounds like if it was working for you, it probably was working for everyone else because of your client load. I assume you have right all the different emails you manage. I'd love to go a little bit into that piece of it, because how long how long have you been in the email game on advertised health side? I mean, I would say pushing 20 years. Wow. Okay. So 20 years, over 200 lists you're managing. You must see a lot. Would you, what's, because uh, something, some root, some stuff I've heard in the recent, few, recent term, right? Last three months, six months, 12 months has been inbox deliverability is really tough right now. Um, email revenue is down for a lot of people. Like it's, you know, chatting with list managers, product owners, et cetera. They're like, is everyone having this problem? Is it just me? And I've heard it from multiple sources. Have, do you have any insight on what's changed or why people are running into these issues now versus where they were a year or two ago? I mean, it depends the vertical, it depends the brand, it depends sure, the sure. vertical that you're in, right? So, I mean, if Most you're going to be the health vertical, I'd say, yeah, kind of like the, sure. which is a big vertical, right? Well, but, it's, it's yeah. not even in the health vertical. I would say it's, mm -hmm. it's basically the, the performance based marketing vertical, the affiliate yep. vertical. Yep. So, if you have a, a subscriber base that basically you're running different types of offers at any different type, at any given day and so on. I think what happens is that just like Facebook had it back in the day, just like Google had it back in the day, the same way the ISPs will, will have those type of policies where they're going to they're going to kind of load balance you out because they're, you're, you're, you're basically sending different types of offers at any given time. So at the end of the day, everybody had problems in general, like there's been problems all the time, but it's a question of how to deal with the problems properly. Right. And so the ISPs are like the bouncer at a, at a nightclub. Just make sure you get in. And what I mean by that is that they have metrics that you got to follow, right? They want engagement. They want they want they, they want you they want people to open up your emails. They want people to engage with your newsletters. But most importantly, they want you to make sure that you actually care for the subscribers that are there in the sense where you'll send them relevant content. You keep your spam complaints at a threshold. They're looking at metrics. As long as you, you provide all those metrics as a checklist, then you're going to get inside that club. You know what I mean? And so. A lot of marketers are doing still are still doing email like it was 1996, where you understand. So they're just blasting stuff. It's, there's no strategy behind it, and I'm not. I'm not speaking. There's a lot of good email marketers out there, okay, but I'm not. I'm not trying to say I'm the best one that's out there. But you need to look at your metrics. You need to look at your deliverability. Like even today, I've I've see, I've, I've met some uh, some list owners that have really a, a substantial amount of data, but. They'll have Gmail, not inboxing. They'll have Yahoo, not inboxing. I mean, that's 20, 30 percent of your list. And so why are you why is that not important to you? And sorry, when you say not inboxing, is that just people not opening or emails actually just aren't getting to that I, Gmail at Gmail account? I would say both. What happens it's either they bounce, whether whether the ESP does the ISP doesn't allow them in. So you're or, okay, so the bouncer's not even letting those emails exactly. out of your outbox yes. essentially <laughs> yeah. exactly or they're just they're gonna let you in but they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna just leave you in general admission so nobody's actually cares about general admission so the challenges we've had those challenges as well also we have we had a lot of challenges with, with yahoo in the last 90 days but at the end of the day you got to find your, your, your sweet spot when it comes to that and it's not just pushing a button and think it's going to change so consider the consider what they want and what they like and just provide them exactly that. Yeah. What what mistakes are people making to go against these ESPs? Kind of what 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 does an ESP what does an ESP like, and what are people doing wrong to kind of go around that to not do that? Does that make sense? I think what What's pissing off the bouncer before you even get into the club. <laughs> I don't, I, you know what I realize? I think that people are still on the game of is the amount of emails I send, and not the quality of emails I send. I'm supposed to send my list three times a day, every day, right? <laughs> no, but you know what? There's a different strategy for everything. Look, there are certain brands that we do two, twice a day. 
you know it's i don't think it's the frequency it's mm -hmm. it, it comes back to the metrics right it's, but the, so if the metrics check in i can actually if i want to i can send six times a day if i want to because the metrics check in right so i think what happens is that people they think that i need to send to the full list or a big part of the list because it's a numbers game but the reality of things is that if you if you just send to us like a tight segment okay that are the most active and you do that for a couple of a couple of weeks maybe a couple maybe two months and then you start opening up the door for the non-actives that are there slowly slowly those people will become because they're all it's not like you have all fake email addresses right it's not because you have a hundred thousand people that 50 percent of them are, are inactive they're all they're all valid but the isp decides which ones are going to open your stuff? Which ones are going to be delivered to your? Sorry, which ones are going to be delivered to your inbox? Which ones are not going to be delivered to your inbox? So there is a science behind it, to be honest with you. And I think a lot of people think it's still a push button game. I mean, 1996 yeah. have done that. You sent. What are what are the key metrics that. people should be looking at? Is it because I know iOS and Apple policies have changed a whole bunch of things for oh, people. Yeah. Like like what. What should people be measuring now? And I'm sure it depends for everybody what a good threshold is, but what is like your leading indicator of this is going poorly or badly? Is it open rate? Is it click-through rate? What What is that main I metric you're it, following? I think it always starts with open rate, but I also believe that you need to leverage, sorry, not leverage, sorry. You need to evaluate the click-through rate that you had before the iOS, evaluate what your CTR is now after the iOS, and see if it actually affected it. Obviously, there will be inflated open rates, but the ISPs know that also. Like Gmail knows that. They already know that the email marketers are having this problem. So they might be a bit more lenient in some sort of way. But at the end of the day, everybody, everybody's experiencing the same problem. So if I think the most important is that the, your open rates have been inflated. Okay, so take yourself, make a percentage of what you think it is that, that, that got inflated and I mean, every, it's across the board. It's very, it, it depends, right? So there could be, in certain cases, it's 15, 20%. In certain cases, it's 40%. But in general, I think your CTR will tell you how many of those openers are real. So take your CTR pre-iOS release and check your average, what it was. Look at your average now and then see if what's the percentage that drops or if it's, and then you can actually dictate what's your open rate. And are you, is. are you looking at CTR, looking at click-through rate based on how many emails that went out? Because oh, yeah. open. I, I click open to, rate. Do do open rate, like, uh, sorry, CTO, click to open. Click so to open, okay. The, the click to open rate. And then oh, all, click also, to open rate. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we, that's amazing. But people can still do the CTR. People also, also look at, look at it that way. We just use that metric, the CTO. It's like, you just got to make sure that you, you, you run all the checklists. Look, I'll give an example. And I'd said it before. I've seen people that are doing good email marketing, but they have Yahoo zero bounces. Why are you not looking at that? Like, why would you not want to get, it's like it's low hanging fruit. You have the subscriber. You're just not getting into Yahoo. Why don't you put energy in that? So everybody has their own philosophies on what's important for them in their business or whatever it is. But for me, I find that we are like a full circle. We look at every single aspect of things. Gotcha. You know? So Josh, you have anything to jump in there with? Anything that you're seeing with the people you're chatting with that are common things that they're just often have some, maybe it's a mistake they didn't realize they're making. And they're just like, oh, that could be better. Yeah, and I can give a little more context on uh, on why I'm on the call. I mean, we can sit here and listen to Joe all day because Joe has uh, just, he won't, he won't declare himself like the best email marketer <laughs> by any means, but I can come in here as an unbiased third party and feel like Joe, Joe knows what he's talking about. He's proven himself over the years. Um, and when I was at ClickBank, uh, I got to work with Joe as an account manager years back and I uh, got to see it firsthand then. Yeah, I've seen um, the what I, it's, <laughs> it's not insane. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. it's impressive. <laughs> and uh, what yeah. he does, I'm sure all of his clients know full well, like what Advertise Health brings to the table. Um, what I, what I love, uh, coming in, um, so I, Joe brought me in to really help build that inbox geek, which we'll probably talk about later, uh, which has been, it's been a blast. It's been a uh, you know, handful of months now. What I've been able to witness coming into this, you know, I've been in the email game for some time, but not in depth. I'm more on the affiliate marketing JV side of things and being able to witness, uh, how they go about. And, and, and really focus and dial in on deliverability. I personally haven't seen that same emphasis, that same uh, focus dedicated to the technical side of deliverability. There are a lot of copywriters out there that are, that are experts at what they do and how to 
mitigate any resistance from the ISPs based on how you're delivering your content. So making sure that your subject lines read certain things. I know Liz Graham is exceptional in what she does because she knows what are the keywords that you should be leaving out of your subject lines, body copy, et cetera, to not get things flagged. And she's not the only one. I'm sure there's others that are that are uh, very much up to par, uh, very good at what they do. Uh, what I see in Advertise Health um, is Joe and his team, the team that he's established are, are great at, uh, dialing in like what are the what are the technical components to deliverability that aren't really getting discussed at a higher level things that like personally being in the email for some time being in email for some time i haven't ever had that really strong foundation so i would guess that anybody who um may be new to email marketing or who are you know the, the new platinum accounts on clickbank who go from like you know struggling for years to like boom they make it the next uh in, in a month or two months or doing six figures a month in revenue, like what do they do then to, to manage their, uh, their email list and, and keep it fresh and whatnot. And, and so we have our own process at advertise health. Um, the, the team has their own process of what they go through with, with something like a, a deliverability audit, essentially um, mm. things that a lot of people aren't looking at um, that some may be obvious, especially to the email experts out there, but there are also some, uh, various components to it that aren't getting looked at. Um, Joe had mentioned avoiding spam complaints or whatnot. So making sure that you're cleaning the list periodically and how often that should be done. If you're uh, heavily in the world of direct response and you're a performance marketer that drives a ton of email volume, mailing once, twice a day, um, then you probably are going to want to clean a lot more often than if you're uh, an e-commerce brand that sends three to four emails a month, or sorry, a week. And it's a lot more, uh, safer content um, and not nearly as like the curiosity driven, like click heavy emails, uh, making sure that you're going about that, but then also making sure you're getting rid of uh, in that process, you want to get rid of spam traps and honeypots. If you, that's something that I've just recently learned about. Um, what's being a honeypot besides what's in my cabinet? Cause it sounds like a do good thing. A, do you have a honeypot sitting in your cabinet? Yeah. That's, that's what the little like, Honey, what do you call yeah, it? A little like what Winnie the Pooh that? spoon thing. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I associate with. I would probably call it a Winnie the Pooh spoon as well. <laughs> um, Joe, can you dive into that, or otherwise I can talk talk a little bit about like what that honey pot is no, essentially. You actually, you've been doing a great job so far. Actually, you're almost better than me at talking. <laughs> I, I just I just talk a lot. I guess I don't know what it is. <laughs> but... No, I'm serious. So I'm, I'm complimenting you. Cool. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, so the honeypot is essentially uh, similar to a spam trap. It's it's um, an email that gets um, that has it's essentially gone dormant, but is kept around to track whether or not emails are getting delivered to that dormant email. So if that email wasn't associated with any kind of list, et cetera, that means that a bot or something has has scanned. Uh, it's found your email in some form or another and is now blasting you with emails. And so it's clearly spam because nothing is that hasn't opted into anything. And so that they're able to use those honeypot traps as, as uh, being able to, to catch spam spammers. So if you're not cleaning your list regularly, those are going to sneak in on occasion, uh, potentially um, over time. And uh, you, you you essentially, if you're not cleaning your list, you're going to rent those. Especially if you're buying buying lists, if you're renting lists, et cetera, you don't necessarily yeah, know. Yeah, so when you say cleaning your list, I assume that means one thing, but you just clarify that. Yeah, and actually, Joe, can I can I jump over to you on that? Because I'd love to get your yeah, take sure. on, on what you guys go through on that with Advertise Health. So what, happens is, what happens is that there's a lot of services out there where they have databases of pools of what they consider spam traps, honeypots, and so on and so forth complainers, whatever it is. So what you do is you, you scrub it against their database and they have an extensive amount of data and they'll come back and tell you, listen, let's say you scrub 50,000 contacts. They'll say, listen, 5,000 of these contacts are either whether they're unmailable because they're invalid, let's say. Uh, but more importantly is that these people are tend to maybe just become honeypots or, or complainers and so on and so forth. So you just scrub it. It's, it's not because... You because the thing is a lot of this data you, you acquired from a sale, right? So it was a real person at one point. And what happens is Hotmail might say if, if an email address hasn't been logged into in, I don't know, six, eight, 12 months. Well, if you're still emailing that email address, well, it flips into some sort of, um, let's call it spam trap, right? But he was, a customer, he was a customer of yours a year ago, you know? And so yeah. the hygiene is, is, is an important process of it as well so there's that's crazy because 
I, I thought cleaning up your list meant like, just like, oh, this person stopped being active. They've kind of fallen off. Maybe you put them on like a lower engagement, lower email priority and kind of just eventually retire them. I didn't realize you could actually rem actively remove people because they're on those types of spam, honeypot, ambulance chaser type yes. list. Okay, that's we, fascinating. I, yeah. I actually did that at, at Organifi. I actually don't remember the name. Mm -hmm. was. Uh, what service have you used, Joe? I want to say Optismo did that for us. I could be wrong, though, on, on who it was. We had, we had oversight, the email oversight, and I think there was like even Bright Verified. There was like maybe two or three three uh, three type of companies that we, we, we've used in the past that uh, – I mean, a lot of them are sharing the same type of database, right? Sure. Some of them have a distinct database because they're not sharing it. So sometimes sometimes we've been into processes where we use two or three companies at the same time. Because like I said, the most important thing is making sure that the people that want to receive your email are like, the, if you're sending email, people want to receive it. You know what I mean? It's, that's it. It's like, it's that simple. But if somebody unsubscribes from your email, let him unsubscribe. Who cares? He doesn't want your stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So of course... I, I, because we've we've run into that, you know, with our clients and stuff too, with like the X mission domains and like the kind of the ambulance chasing kind of hosting sites, which just have a bunch of domains on their places and they might be real people using those domains, but if you email someone at that domain, the hosting company is gonna come after you. Yeah, exactly. And that's like the only way they're staying in business is going after litigation. And it's just yeah. it's insane. It's like <laughs> so you have to protect yourself, play a little bit of defense against that sort of service. Gosh. That, Fortunately okay, there are well, some that's, there's some good tools out there that you can do to, to monitor that stuff. Like we've already talked about the list cleaning and, and I, I wish I could remember the one that I used and I was at Organifi um, that we essentially took a, a massive database uh, and essentially scrubbed it to make sure that there weren't any mm -hmm. spam traps, honeypots and anything else that emails we shouldn't be sending to essentially. At what, at what size of email list does someone need to worry about really optimizing for all this stuff. Cause I imagine there's a person who's going out there and going, okay, well I've got, let's say a list of 50,000 or a hundred thousand, whatever it might be. And they're maybe trying to keep it simple and just keep it moving versus going, okay, I really need to invest in the time and energy and resources into optimizing the levers that will improve deliverability will clean up, you know, the spam honeypot stuff that they might even know is an issue. Is there a list size you see where it's like, you really need to focus on this if you're not? It doesn't work on list size. This is, I love that you asked that question because the thing is that people feel as if they don't, if they don't mail, if they mail too much, they're hurting themselves is the opposite. And so I'm not saying like, again, it's not coming down to mailing three times a day, but daily is not a bad practice and the reason why that is is because let's say you have let's say you acquire customers and all of a sudden you you uh, you acquire a customer on a monday and the next time you email them is on a sunday um just because of your frequency that's so low the isps don't like that either mm -hmm. because it's not the amount of email it's how the people engage and a lot, oh, of, a lot of a lot of brands have a problem with that with with emailing their customers and i tell the brands if you're not emailing them somebody else will like somebody else is in their inbox you think you're the only the only person that acquired this customer today you know there's going to be another 20 brands tomorrow in your inbox you always got to compete with it so it's like okay you don't want to you want to go crazy on that stuff but figure out the, the sweet spot and the sweet spot is based on your metrics you know your your, your database your subscribers will tell you if they don't like you because you're going to start seeing certain metrics that you don't want to see. And then they'll tell you, you like you because you're going to see metrics that you like them. And so you need to go back and forth. And it's not, it's sometimes it's not even about just selling them every day on something, bring them some value somehow, bring them high value discounts on other products. So just to keep them opening up your, your, your email, you're always competing. You know, like I'll give you an example, Thomas, I mean, I consume online, yes, but every day that I walk in, I, I, I log into my, my inbox, there is a tremendous amount of brands emailing me. I mean, you're gonna not you're not gonna be one of them. This <laughs> you know, it's like it's look at your, your Facebook or your Instagram scroll. How many how many brands are hitting you? It's the same logic, you know. Do they say I'm not gonna hit I'm not gonna hit you up on your scroll on a Tuesday because I'm gonna make you relax? No, they're gonna hit you up on your Instagram feed every day <laughs> to make sure that you convert, you know? I mean, just find a, a good in between at that point. But a lot of brands have a misconception if I mail if I, if I mail more than once a week or twice a week, I it's actually hurting you. If you're it not could, if you're not mailing more often, right? 
it could actually be hurting you. Because your engagement would be so low because people aren't right. even used to seeing an email, so they're not even going to click on it, right? Yeah. They also might have forgotten you. Yeah. If yeah. you're always there, because whatever it is that you're giving them, whether it's content, whether it's uh, high discounts on certain products, whether it's additional suggestions of other products, they know they're, they're, they're familiar with you now. You know, that makes a ton of sense. So, yeah. And then at that point, the, the, if they don't want to see you anymore, well, they can just click and subscribe. Another good trick that I would say that worked out and, and we use a lot, we, 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 we allow them to unsubscribe very easily. And by allowing them totally. to subscribe very easily, it allows them to not try to go find and say like spam or report to spam, whatever it is, because we make it accessible. It's always at the top. If you want to leave, you can. So are ESPs not looking at unsubscribe being a bad metric? I, I cannot speak on that one because I'm not 100% sure if uh, unsubscribe is. But it's better than a spam metric. complaint. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah. the most spam yes. complaint first. Gotcha. Okay. And so what does what does that look like? Are you just making the unsubscribe button at the bottom of the email look really yeah, obvious? Top. It's at the top? Yeah, we put it at the top. Is that for every email or is that like the first few? Every single one. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. so you're sending out an email and there's just like, so is this the like a text link, right, Joe? Yeah. It's so a text yeah, link. Okay. Well, what we do is we have a, we have text that tells you why you're opted to this email, which also okay. that text don't take don't take it for granted. It's actually very important to put at the top. Okay, so you're already telling the person what what was the permission? Why is he here for? Mm. And then we put an unsubscribe button. Look, it, it's it's a technique that we have, and it just worked for us. It's like right? if you were um, meeting someone at a conference that you hadn't seen in two years, right? You wouldn't just go, "Oh, hey, how's it going?" Like you hadn't ever spoken before, right? You'd go up and go, Hey, remember we chatted that TNC two years ago. It's been good to see you again. You'd almost like pre-introduce yeah. yourself in person. So why not do that over email where there's even less <laughs> authenticity there? Look, right? I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, we might get more unsubscribes than, than not, but at, look, I, I don't know. To us, we look at the metrics more. Our delivery is impeccable. Quality over quantity. And to, so to we're like, okay, yeah. look, we might lose a certain percentage more, but we always have an influx of new customers coming in on a daily basis. Look, we have customers that, that, I mean, they haven't acquired a new customer in the last three years and those lists are still active, you know, and they're still, they're still generating income. So, I mean, everybody has their own, we're not the kings of it, you know, we're pretty good at it, but everybody has their own, uh, their own technique, right? I've probably seen other people that do some great stuff and you learn from them and then you implement the stuff that you like from it into your own operation. You know, I but that. the beauty, I think the beauty about what we did recently with Inbox Geek is that we can literally get those non openers to open up again. And that is incredible because they were just dormant. They were, they were dead on your list. And so you just created a whole new, some new eyeballs and then some new revenue that just never existed. Yeah. I really, I really want to dive into that before we move into the kind of inactives becoming actives. Is there any other like, things you just beat your head against the wall that you see someone doing with their email list, whether it's a techie geek thing, you're just like, Oh, I wish they would just change this thing, change this thing on their side, or maybe a practice they're doing like you just described with how they're hiding unsubscribe or something like that. This is for mean, both of you. Yeah. I mean, trying to do like misleading uh, subject lines, aggress like, you know, like the R E and then two dots, like that stuff. Yes. Might get you a big open rate today, but tomorrow you might get a, bad, a, a worse delivery rate. Just because of that, because it's gonna, you're, because you're, you're fooling somebody at that point. Right. That you're person's opening it regarding your order type subject lines that get people to I open. Mean, like, oh, what happened to my order? That, yeah. That works in certain cases. If it's actually formulated in a way that it's kind of like when they open it up, they get like some some sort of big value. What I realize is when people use that, your order is ready, and then you open it up, and it's like something like buy one bottle of turmeric and, and get four for free. Then they feel a. So it's like, you understand? So it's really, you've got to gauge, but if you're telling them your order is ready and then you're opening up something to some sort of off, some sort of product that they really don't care about, then that's when your metrics get, get, get weird, you know? So don't, don't chase the short term vanity metrics for <laughs> sales that's for uh, long term you know, quality. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, there's something about what I've learned is that subject lines with fruits and vegetables for some reason have high open rates. You know, oh, okay. lemon, lemon juice, lemon, just lemon in general has a high open rate. There's I've heard lemon the same from, from others. Yeah, that's it's like, hilarious. But yeah. you got to split that. Make Not sure limes though, just lemon. Yeah. Got tested. No. Stop treating your list like it's, it's like, 
stop going through it like crazy, like nurture it somehow. Because that list, if it's if it's well managed, can be sustainable for a long period of time. Since it's on a size thing, is there like a this is something I heard when I first started the ClickBank seven years ago now. It was like, you should make a dollar per email per month kind of thing on average, right? So if you have a 100,000 person list, you should make $100,000 a month on it. it. I'm sure that's a total generality, totally depends on everybody. But is there a point where you're like, hey, you've got a list of this many people, you should expect to make this much money? Is there any kind of barometer that you're looking at on a cost per mailing basis on, or I should say revenue per mailing basis, revenue per su subscriber per customer kind of thing that you're looking at with your clients and with your lists? It depends on, the, on where the data comes from. If they're opting into a free book or a free gift. Let, yeah, let's assume it's a supplement seller or an ebook seller, someone who's got a product that they've buyers. actually bought for at least 30 bucks on the, on yeah. the value. I mean, a dollar should be probably somewhere where it, is your minimum that you want to see minimum. Okay. Yeah. I think well, I'm so. glad I'm not too far off. <laughs> <laughs> and then Josh, I really, I really want to chew on the turning, uh, inactives to active, but do you have any other like head butting? Like, uh, it just makes you cringe when you see that someone's doing X, Y's thing could be techie, could be practice. Yeah. I'd say it's a little more, uh, a little bit of both kind of on the techie practical side of things. And it isn't something that more I bang my head against more of just something I wanted to make sure we could do to, to provide some value. So something happens a lot is just misplaced links, placing a link that, uh, make sure you're testing your links as an obvious, like, duh, do that all the time. Uh, but more than that, I remember being at ClickBank and using MX Toolbox, for example, to see what's going on with ClickBank hop links. Are they, are they tracking correctly? Are they getting spam blocked for some reason? Um, and so using MX Toolbox to check to make sure that the domains being used um, are, are not getting listed on, on uh, spam house, et cetera, other, other lists and whatnot. Uh, but another tool that I actually learned from the team and hat tip to, uh, to Radu on our team at Advertise Health. Um, so they use Mail Genius quite a bit to be able to test whether or not uh, to, essentially, are your emails landing in the spam folder or not? And so they mm -hmm. allow you to uh, send an email to a specific address, and then they'll give you kind of like a score on what you should be working on. Um, I know like Pingdom, for example, is like that for your speed load times. And so I kind of envision Mail Genius is doing that, but for your email when it comes to spam. Oh, so Mail Genius being yeah. a really cool tool to use. Um, and additionally, what, what we've done, um, at least the Advertise Health team, <clears throat> as far as like a really good practice um, to see how your new leads, when they show up, like let's say you just had a huge affiliate promo, you got uh, you know 10,000 new customers added to your list. Uh, they're all brand new to your list. So what you wanna know, even before those people show up to your list is how, how your emails are gonna inbox those new leads. And so to do that, what we recommend you do on the Advertise Health side is putting seed emails uh, into your list to see how cold email addresses are going to respond as basically how your new data is going to respond. So you're setting up email addresses in the various like bigger ISPs when you're maybe setting up an email address with Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, Outlook, and Comcast, for example, the, the, the big ones and the, like the really big ones like Gmail, the smaller ones like Comcast, Outlook. Um, but being able to set up these seed emails to see where your emails are going to land? Are they going to land in promotions? Are they going to land in the primary inbox? Are oh, they going to okay. land in spam? So you're, going, so you're going creating all these fresh emails on these bigger common email providers, right? And then you're sending to exactly. those. Exactly. Because every, every yeah. uh, ISP is going to act differently. You know, like they're going to have different mm -hmm. uh, rules, you know, nuanced and whatnot. And so being able to see how your, your emails are inboxing for each one of these, once you get this new influx of leads, they're cold leads. So if you have customers that have been in your list for two years, they're getting treated differently than those who are brand new to your list. So being able to use that kind of a practice is going to in ensure that you're going to hit those, you know, dollar per email metrics, whatever metrics you want to use to, to gauge your revenue success. Gotcha. And I'm sure this is a loaded question, which if you want to not answer it, that's totally fine. But I'm going to ask it. Is there any ESPs that you see people using? They're just like, yes, okay, they're using these people. This will be great. Or the... Um, I don't want to get into like a flame war of ones you don't like, but <laughs> so you what, do you mean, what, do you like, like, what do you mean by the question? Like what, uh, ESPs as, as Tom is Tom is like, wanting us to throw somebody under the bus. That's what he wants. That's what he, he wants blood. You know, I, would, I would tell you that it's hard to judge that because certain people, let's say that there's certain ESPs that we use and people are like, we had a horrible experience, at, but we have a great experience with it. And so oh, okay, gotcha, it's yeah. really a case by case basis. There's no silver bullet in the email game, man. 
it really yeah, that makes really, sense. It's, it's it's really it's it really depends on a case by case basis. Yeah, I imagine people should test them if they're curious and kind of put a segment of their new list on a new one and see if I, it does better or worse, and then move more over gradually. Things like that. I think yeah. people should be testing this piece frequently because you don't just want to rely on one. Like that, let's say that provider has some sort of issues one day, then your whole business could just suffer because of that. Yep. Yep. Well, let's, okay. Let's, let's chew on a bit of this active or inactive to active premise that I've been hearing a lot about, because I think that's really compelling. Um, Josh or Joe, whoever wants to kind of tee it up, I'd love to kind of understand how this came about for you and then what you've been doing with it. Cause it sounds really compelling. So I guess first, like what, where did this come from with active campaign or excuse me, not active campaign <laughs> too, too many ESP things about it. with advertised health. Um, cause I imagine you had a ton of inactives across all those email lists you had. And then how did, so how did you start warming those up into actives in the first place? Yeah. Joe, if you want to jump in, like he's been able to cover a little bit about, you know, they were uh, on the advertised health side, you know, already managing dozens of lists, hundreds of lists, really. Um, and having just this massive, I mean, I think anybody who's done a ton of email over time has this big pile of data just sitting there collecting dust, not doing anything. Um, and more often than not, it's not on your ESP because you don't want to be paying for those subscribers if you have that kind of a pricing model. Um, but Joe, is there anything you wanted to share before I, I can jump in all kinds of stuff as far as like how it came about? Start, st go ahead and I'll, I'll jump in afterwards. If, if cool, man. Know. Sounds good. Uh, so what it comes down to, like you said, there's piles of inactive data that the Advertise Health is managing. And uh, when they did come across building the software internally, um, where they could inbox the emails the moment the subscribers are reading their inbox, um, it, it opened up a, another an entirely new revenue channel. So if you look at, so Neil Patel, for example, Neil Patel has a blog, he's awesome. And, and one, of the, uh, one of the pieces that he, he was writing about email deliverability is the fact that on average, uh, his metric, I don't know where he pulled it from, um, but on average, email marketers don't send to 60% of their list, or, or rather 60% of their list is inactive. Whether that be people they don't email at all, that they acquired and is now like a dormant lead that they've removed from their ESP, um, or people that just don't have it open in a very long time. 60% um, is a pretty crazy number uh, for someone who whose business is entirely, not entirely email, but I'd say a lot of the folks who are on ClickBank yeah. and who are in our space, like, their business depends on email uh, for monetization. If yeah, if you're paying the affiliate 75 plus percent of the front end, you know, yeah. the, the, all your profits in the email that you're collecting. Yep. So if you're breaking even to acquire the lead, then the email, unless you've got some SMS strategies, which are also great, um, email's where it's at. So once you can unlock these, you know, high percentage of emails that you no longer pay any attention to and can consider that as a revenue channel, it unlocks the opportunity. So within... Within Inbox Geek, we had one client in particular, a, a ClickBank vendor, um, who was in the weight loss space. Um, I'd say one of the one of the examples we like to use a lot. Uh, over the course of three months, we took a list of I want to say it was like 40, 45,000 emails, reactivated about a third of those into re, uh, active email users, and generated about ooh, it was about forty grand in revenue over the course of the three months of going from zero to forty grand. So the segment was inactive forty to fifty thousand people, and then you or emails, and then you yep. reacted about reactivated about a third of those and generated about forty two thousand dollars in revenue. Is what it was in the course of three months, and that was zero revenue. Those emails are producing nothing before they're just sitting in a box. That's roughly fifteen thousand fifteen thousand emails that you generated forty thousand dollars worth of profit from. Yeah, over the course of, of, of three months. Uh, that's and awesome. that's not the only example. We have one other one who, I don't know if they currently sell their products on ClickBank or not, but they do act as an affiliate. Um, but they had a massive uh, a list of, of inactives. And so somebody has been doing this for years who has hundreds of thousands, if not seven figures of inactive email data. You can imagine the opportunity if, like, let's say I was a top seller on ClickBank back in 2017 or 2016. And so my, the majority of my email data is from that era. And, uh, you know, over the course of four or five years of emailing them, now I'm only looking at 20% of those existing customers and original customers that are still active. You're sitting on hundreds of thousands of, of inactive data. So in this instance, uh, this individual or this, this company rather, um, we took their inactive file and we reactivated it and doubled their email revenue just by doing that. 
Uh, <laughs> their overall granted, email revenue. <laughs> yeah, granted <laughs> that inactive email, uh, that in, inactive file represented uh, you know, a significant percentage of their overall email data. But sure. the fact that we were able to take just a portion of that, 25% of it, 30% of it, and reactivate it, opened the door to doubling their email revenue because they were sitting at so much opportunity. And, and I'm guessing you're doing it in a way that isn't triggering those honey pots and spam filters, and, <laughs> right? Because you're yeah, great yeah. question. So, Joe, go ahead, man. No, no, go ahead. I was just going oh, I was, I was going to mention it's it's definitely twofold. So, like Inbox Geek is a software that we built out with this concept. The, the software itself is designed to do exactly what we're saying. Uh, you would essentially integrate your ESP with Inbox Geek. You don't have to upload your data. You just in, integrate it, and then from there. Uh, we identify when those users are in their inbox. We fire the emails, or sorry, we don't fire the emails. We fire an IPI call to your email, uh, your ESP, and then you would fire the emails based on the rules, triggers, et cetera, you have set up. So that's the software. And that's one side of it, is being able to do that. The other side of it is all the prep work beforehand. And that's where Advertise Health has been, been really exceptional, is that they have the expertise in-house to say, here's what you should be doing even before you start working on um, reactivating these emails. Because you, like you said, you want to go through the, the list hygiene process to make sure that you're eliminating all these spam traps. Uh, you want to go through and make sure that uh, you're focusing on the, the, the top tier, like the strategy, the, the where you're going to get the most return. So for example, we have one client right now who's been a ClickBank seller for years um, with a lot of top offers. And if we've run a test with four of their segments, essentially like four of like product launches they've had in the last seven or eight years. Uh, and we can kind of see consistently which of those segments are driving the most return or I guess the most, uh, most engagement we'll say. So maybe a list that's a year old is driving a 25% open rate. A list that is five, six years old is driving like a 16, 17, or man, more like a 14, 15% open rate. Um, but being able to to align advertise health strategy and knowledge of doing all like the checking the boxes, so to speak, to improve deliverability, then also throwing inbox geek on top of that to deliver your emails the moment your subscribers are in their inbox. That's like in tandem is what's working for us. Oh, that makes a ton of sense. So you're Look, I mean, yeah. just to add to what Josh said is that we had some clients active clients of ours for years now, we went back and we, we went to the non-openers from four or five years ago. And we created a whole new campaign, a whole new active campaign from them. And it's just month over month, that campaign that was just collecting dust is generating revenue. I mean, especially like, I'm not sure what's going on in the, on the media buying side on Facebook and so on and so forth, because we have another company that, that we have a, a functional T and I know, I know how tough it is to buy traffic on, on Facebook and how expensive it's getting and so on and so forth. Email is the highest ROI. If you already have those people in your database, it's like, it's literally, it's so much, it's, it's lower than lower, low hanging fruit at that point. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's a no brainer, you know? And, and if you don't have the bandwidth on your, on your team or in your company to do it, well then inbox key can also give you some sort of white label service as well. Like it really worked for us, you know what I mean? And we just want it. Like, if it worked for us, it can work for anybody. That's how we see it. Well, I mean, it seems like you've been able to test it across all the email lists that you've operated on to the nth degree, right? So I'm sure this is very fully fleshed out before it's even hit the masses, so to speak. So that makes a ton of sense, though. I mean, that's what I when I'm talking to potential new clients on ClickBank and stuff. I qualify them by asking, you know, okay what's the offer doing, but now what's your customer lifetime value? And if that lifetime value isn't a multiplier of their AOV on the initial end, there's a big hole in their economics to scale. And right, if you're just leaving money on the ground <laughs> or fruit on the ground, let's call it, um, with this, without monetizing the inactives that you've probably accumulated over the years, then yeah, if you could just add a percentage, even if it's, you know, let's say five, 10% of your revenue, that's pretty significant at scale. So you could be really doubling down there if it, I was curious, like, well, oh, sorry, I, I've got a, let's do, I'll do a, I've got a bonus question after we kind of do kind of wrap up here for y'all. Um, but where can people, if they're like, okay, I need to chat with Josh and Joe and figure this out, where's the best place for them to go learn more about y'all? You can always go to inboxgeek.com. That's that's easy. Um, but I'm, I'm an open book. Find me on Facebook, find me on Skype. Uh, but my, my, my email is probably the easiest to remember is josh at inboxgeek.com. Uh, that's 
pretty as easy as it sounds. Not, I don't have a complicated name to spell. It's about as basic as it gets. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> feel free to email me. Um, you find me on find me on Facebook. Uh, I would say elsewhere, but I don't. I don't really social media. It's kind of funny. I've learned the direct response world loves to hold on to kind of like the less trendy technologies. Like why do we all use Skype and Facebook? I don't know, but we do, and it's handy. I know Slack is uh, getting obviously a lot more picked up. Anyway, yeah, find me, find me where you can. But Josh at inboxgeek.com is a great place. And then um, for advertise health, is that same for advertise health services and things like that? Or for you, Joe? I mean, we treat things. I mean, uh, let's keep it under the inbox geek umbrella at this point because yeah. uh, I would say, look, I'm Joe at inboxgeek.com, but I think that contact Josh and he's going he's gonna to take care of you well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll no, be no. the gatekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I'll say it again, right? We've seen the revenue y'all have done on the advertised health side for years and significant with the email list you manage. So I know y'all can back up what you're talking about. Um, I'm excited to see what you're doing on the software side and the service over there. Um, for the little bonus question for everybody, I was curious for those listening that might have a smaller email list, let's say in the 20,000 range, somewhere in that or less or even, right? What A lot of what we're talking about sounds like it's for the bigger sellers, people have been around for a while, they amass some scale or they're hitting scale. But for the smaller people who are getting going, they're getting some traction, what are some, we'll give you both some tips and tricks, but let's start with you, Joe. Like what's a tip and trick you'd give somebody if they've got a growing email list, but it's small to make sure they're maximizing and really getting that low hanging fruit off the vine there? But I mean, I think everything is based on perspective, right? So even even if you have a smaller list of twenty thousand um, subscribers, and maybe you're only doing sixty day openers as your campaigns, and that's only six thousand people, or eight thousand, or nine thousand people, whatever it is, that balance, whatever increase you can get, is still relatively. Even if it increases your stuff ten percent, then it's ten percent more. I mean. Typically, on a list of 20,000, you should be able to be sending to all-time openers. I mean, if it's a list from the last 20 years and you just you acquire five a month, I mean, I get, I get it. But typically, that list there, I mean, it's not that you're limited limited to what you can do, but it, it, it is what it is. You have a 20,000 list name. You still want to maybe make sure you have the highest open rate possible on that one. And typically, even if you send to the full 20 list and the recent buyers from the last six months, whatever it is, you should have a very healthy open rate. I mean, at the end of the day, there's not there's not much I can tell you. Just keep those open rates high at that point. And you know what? Do that metrics. Still, a 20,000-person list can still bring you twenty to $30,000 a month of revenue. You know, like that's how yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's not insignificant, right? It's not <laughs> insignificant at that point, yeah. right? But if you start, if you, what's also more important is that if you start seeing deliverability issues, and you say, oh, it's only 5% of my list. No, it's that's why you should be checking it because it's 5% and you have a small list. And so the stuff that you kept lingering around is just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. So just, I think at, the, at that point, just make, you have, make sure you have the highest possible delivery. And especially it would be much easier for you at a 20,000 list than 150 or 300 or a million list. You know what I mean? And so I, yeah. so I, I think it's at the 20,000 list is pr- pretty easy to manage at that point. You know, it's yeah, not that I love complicated. That. If you're on a twenty thousand list, I would I would suggest that you go on on a platform that has high delivery because it's a smaller list. As your list grows, we like, everybody has their own opinion and their own own, own techniques. We be, we find that over time, the bigger the data you have, the better it is to go on dedicated IPs than shared. That was that's that was our experience over time. But there's people that will tell you the opposite. They're on shared and they're having great delivery. But for us, dedicated, we control our delivery. Nobody's affecting our stuff. We're not, we're not in a shared environment where another brand can hurt our reputation. Makes sense. Yep, makes total sense. And Josh, how about for you? What are some things that you're seeing that the smaller list owners can implement to get a better return on their time? Yeah, that's it's fair. And I'll I'll actually give a, a I wouldn't call it a shameless plug for Inbox Geek, but actually something that is more of just a, why don't you why don't you manipulate us a little bit. Uh, so we, the way that Inbox Geek is set up right now is anybody can sign up and get a free trial account. And it's like a freemium model. So it's not, you know, one month free and then you're paying, you already put in your credit card. It's basically designed for you to test it. And even before you give us a credit card, you already know it's going to work for you. So it's set up where basically we give you 6,000 events, an event being uh, like our API calls to your ESP. It's basically it. So with those 6,000 events, in theory, you're sending 6,000 emails from your ESP. Um, but that gives you a baseline to see, am I going to get a return off of this? 
Uh, so if you run 6,000 events, you send out 6,000 emails, did you get a 25% open rate? Did you get uh, two or three, four percent click rate? What was the click rate? And then from there, how much revenue were able to generate? Is it worth signing up for a paid subscription? It's a very easy equation to make. Now let's talk about somebody who has a list of 10, 15,000. Go ahead and sign up for a free account because it's not going to hurt you at all. And you don't have to pay for anything. And just use the 6,000 events to re-engage your list. And that's for somebody who only has a list of 10,000, that's a huge, that's, that's a big jump. That's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool tool to use. And so what we recommend um, is, is using that to run some kind of special promo, like 48 hour offer or something for those subscribers, getting them to like using those really nice, uh, like using a pretty heavy promo subject line to get them to click through because uh, you're, you want to send it to your non-openers and send it to your openers as well to see if you can, um, give them that special offer to expire that expires in 48 hours or something to get them to engage. Um, inbox Geek is going to deliver those emails when they're reading in their emails, when they're reading in their inbox. And that's going to help overall with your deliverability. And then if that works, you can still also measure if it makes sense to do paid or not, but it doesn't matter because 6,000 events for free is still going to have a pretty significant impact on the smaller list. I love it. So you're going to sign up free trial, get your 6,000 events for free in there, and then you run a special offer. 48 hour promo type thing, um, some sort of scarcity limit. You're only going to get those delivered to the people when they're actually in their inbox, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and it doesn't yeah, have to be a promo. It could be like a freebie that you're giving away. That's only available yeah. for 48 hours, but in anything essentially that you've seen work well to incentivize your people to re-engage with you, focus on that. Use inbox. You could get an even higher engagement than you were getting before uh, when you did, weren't using a, like a real time deliverability tool. I love that. Well, great. No, that was a great little nugget there for the smaller list. And you've covered a whole bunch of great stuff for the bigger list. So Joe, Josh, thank you so much for your time on affiliated. Um, yeah, I'm always, I love to tap into your geniuses. I have always learned a ton from people like yourself. So thanks for adding value to our platform here. And if there's no further questions, comments, Oof, I don't know. I'm sure Joe could go off on something pretty, pretty deep. I, mean, I think we went all over the place on it. I, I... <laughs> I, well, we well, actually, I was talking to Josh. I was even talking to somebody. Um, I had a meeting before. What we wanted to maybe start creating is a community for people in email marketing, just to actually like plug into. And it's just like everybody shares their experiences or we can provide any, even if it's just us providing value nonstop. Because at the end of the day, even if we see other list managers or other people doing email marketing, we don't see them as competition. You know, there's something you can learn from me and there's something I can learn from you. And and so we're, we, we're trying to maybe grow some sort of network of, of, of a group or whatever you want to call it, where I'm st still playing in my head and I'm still trying to think on how we can wrap it up. Uh, but we have like an intense, we, we're just a knowledge, we are not a knowledgeable. I don't want, I'm, I'm, I try to be humble as much as possible, but we're very good at what we do. Uh, but we can always still have room for improvement. Like we're always, we're always up to learning other people's success and understanding how we can apply it for ourselves and vice versa. Yeah, no, I love that. I'd love to follow up with you on that too, because that's something I've been jamming on hard is the community piece, I think is what you're kind of leaning into there, right? I think the community of the space is what's been able to keep it, not keep it afloat, but really helped it flourish through yeah. COVID and kind of all those kind of pieces between the masterminds, between the events. Um, is that like online, if it is, it's just that general sense of community that we have each other's back and um, yeah, I can go to direct competitor and ask them questions. They'll do the same with me and it's not a big deal and we'll trade notes and get better with each other and kind of rise the tide, if you will. I mean, it sounds, it sounds cliche, but it works. It, is, it yeah. does work. It does work. But, uh, <laughs> Thomas, cool. thank you very much. Yeah, yeah I've been off, you, Thomas. Bro. No, we'll get this out, and I hope people reach out. Remember, it's Joe at Inbox Geek and Josh at InboxGeek.com. Um, and then Advertise Health is our other service there with the inbox management or email management, I should say. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, we do have that. Obviously, we have that service, but I, I, I prefer that we just we, we, we put on the inbox geek side. So it's inbox geek, no S dot com. So hit up Josh or Joe, J O E. I uh, love it. Yeah, yeah, thanks, guys. I'm sure you'll be getting some people inbound and I'll be making introductions as I can because I've been getting more and more questions about email del deliverability. So that will be top of mind and happy scaling, everybody. Mm -hmm.